Welcome to Digital Oil and Gas with Jeffrey Can. I'm Jeffrey. Digital Oil and Gas looks at the impact of digital technology on the global oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Can on Twitter or at jeffreycan.com. This podcast is entitled The Evolution of Digital Twin Technology in Energy. Digital twin technology for energy infrastructure is on the cusp of a dramatic transformation as we decarbonize energy supply. Here's a snapshot to where this technology is going. The simulation business. The simulation center of KSG, a department of Germany's nuclear industry, are leaders in thinking about digital twin technology. KSG came into being years ago to provide nuclear plant simulations for training workers on plant operations, principally for Germany's nuclear sector, but also for other European nuclear plants. The simulation and training business is changing rapidly because of Germany's energy transition plans, which include shutting down its nuclear fleet. Nuclear power plants have had digital versions of their facilities for nearly four decades. After all, Each nuclear plant, while sharing some common features, is unique to its local setting, and it's not practical or safe to have a scaled-down physical version of the same nuclear plant for training purposes. Traditionally, new operators spend time at the training facility to learn their new roles at the helm of a synthetic digital nuclear plant. However, the pandemic forced an immediate shift to provide operator training in a fully virtual way a feature that has opened up training far beyond the physical strengths of a fixed facility. Simulation and training on nuclear facilities will endure as a service beyond Germany's plans, as there are many such facilities around the world. But energy transition will also open up a huge new market for simulation services. Energy supply is changing. Power generation historically has been via large, stable central plants providing base load, into a one-way grid that changed only slowly and predictably. Sources of energy, though, are becoming distributed, decentralized, more varied, and in some cases more variable and even unpredictable. The future will include new supply from on- and offshore wind farms, small rooftop solar to gigawatt solar farms, thermal heat wells, blue and green hydrogen plants, small modular nuclear reactors, seasonal sources, such as hydropower, tidal, and new energy storage via batteries, pump storage, compressed air, and many others. The dominance of large-scale monolithic power utilities serving narrow geographies is potentially over. Energy demand is changing. The energy used for transportation and industrial thermal processes has historically been separate from the energy used to heat and light homes and small businesses. Demand is becoming more integrated and interconnected. Automakers are rapidly abandoning petroleum transportation in favor of electric motors and batteries using the same electric supply network that powers our homes. Hydrogen looks to become the industrial fuel of choice for heat and energy at scale, for cement and steel making, baseload power, shipping, and maybe even as an alternative for transportation. And energy roles are changing. The roles in our power value chain date back over a century to Thomas Edison, who came up with the idea of generation, transmission, distribution, and consumption. The roles are now morphing as tomorrow's power consumer with a big battery in the car and a power collector on the roof, is a generator, a distributor, and a consumer. Power will no longer flow in just one direction, and nor will the money. Consumers will want some decision authority to store or wield their power on their terms. And a more complex future. This emerging mesh of new energy sources, energy demand, and roles creates an entirely new and more complex modeling and simulation requirement for operators. Imagine a future where an operator needs to make a decision about dispatching available inbound wind power supply. Should the wind farm operator go offline for repairs, since other farms are likely to be operating favorably? Should the resulting power be transformed into green hydrogen for storage, 
or wheeled directly to the grid to displace a more expensive source? Or should it be transformed into a heat supply or loaded into industrial batteries or offered to consumers for vehicle energy at an attractive overnight rate? Each option entails different economic outcomes and different effects on the grid. Operators need best-in-class tools and technologies to survive and thrive in this emerging world. The future of the digital twin. Needless to say, the digital twin technologies used to simulate nuclear plants and train operators are, are going to be very handy in modeling this much more complex world. Here's where digital twin tool sets are likely to go. First, comprehensive value chain modeling. Instead of simply modeling and simulating specific assets in the value chain, digital twins will model out the entire value chain, including the many distributed sources of energy, transportation needs, battery storage, base load, hydrogen generators, the works. This will be necessary because we can't build a small-scale physical version of all this infrastructure. Modelers will rely on transfer modeling, a technique whereby a working model is transferred to a new context to minimize the amount of effort required to produce a new model. Simulation development is likely to accelerate. Number two is the dynamic simulation of complex scenarios. Dynamic simulation, which entails using live operating data from real-world conditions instead of static data, data sets, as inputs into the simulator, are now available thanks to the dramatic leaps in computer technology we've seen deployed. Even very complex calculations, including fluid dynamics, can be incorporated live and in real time. Next is full com uh, commercial realism. Simulations have always taken into account commercial considerations, but the future will feature much more commercial variability. In addition to dynamic simulation, Digital twins include dynamic integration with commercial power markets, including short, long, and spot pricing, wholesale power contracting, long-dated contracts, toll structures, and other commercial power market features. And then, cloud-enabled for global application. Simulation models of nuclear plants are tightly coupled to the actual plant design and nuclear asset owners are not keen that the simulation models be available outside of the plant fence. At the nuclear asset level, this has not been a cloud world. But the future models will be thoroughly cloud-enabled, so that trainee operators can access the simulators from anywhere. No more travel. Cloud also unlocks the capability to deliver high-fidelity analytics, not just at the asset level, but to the asset cycle level precise to a moment in time. Next is deep data dependency. Digital twin technology has always been dependent on high quality data to feed the models and the simulations and in the future, even more so. Data in the future will be a critical factor of success, both to train the simulators and to train operators using the simulators. A particular concern are those obscure disruptive events that are not reflected in operating data sets. Digital twin solutions will need to ingest synthetic data, fabricated data that is not generated from the real world, to successfully capture these rare and unique scenarios. It's clear that those who best capture the benefits from this technology will be equally proficient on managing the data assets. Next is the enhanced workforce capability and capacity. One worry that today's operators harbor is that their jobs are at risk as utility and grid companies build the synthetic operator of the future, an AI-enabled robot or algorithm that runs the value chain. Instead, the synthetic operator will take over increasing levels of routine and uninteresting work so that the human operator of the future has more time for more valuable activity. For example, a change in equipment introduces a variance in the digital twin from the operating reality. The human operator of the future will be tasked with creating the synthetic data to help retrain the synthetic operator. And finally, fusion is on the horizon. Way off into the future lies fusion energy. 
Fusion used to be framed on a 50-year horizon. But recent advances in technology have moved Fusion's potential impacts forward to 30 years. That is the life of a traditional fossil fuel development. So in conclusion, these are some of the future developments of the digital twin technology. 